Now the third equation that's on the, on the lecture sheet for the day is the equation that comes into play for calculating the bed surface profile. Let me start over on this, this board on this side with that third equation. It's called the continuity of sediment material. And it goes something like the rate of change in the sediment load with respect to distance plus some width term times uh, the, the uh, change in the sediment bed with respect to time is equal to zero. The units on it then are in terms of um, feet times feet over time, for example, or square feet per time there. And G, the sediment load, instead of expressing that in tons, we would express that in cubic feet per unit of time divided by feet gives us consistent units between the two parts of the equation. In the sketch, then, what we see is, again, here's a stream bed with our three cross sections positioned on that stream bed, like so. And uh, we have our water surface profile. This stream bed, then, instead of being fixed, now can move up and down. Let's assign some depth of sediment material to the stream bed. And let's call that, uh, say that depth of sediment material is Ys. According to this equation then, Ys can change with time B sub zero is the width out from the, so the, the width of flow, for example, the width of flow. So if we multiply that change in bed times B sub zero, that gives a change in cross-sectional area, which must be balanced by the rate in which the sediment load is changing as the load moves downstream. Again, here would be the x direction. All right, now let's establish a control volume on this sketch that's a little different to the control volume that we used over there. On the, on the solution of the energy equation, we let the control, we let the uh, numerical differencing be made from cross-section to cross-section. On this equation for changes in the stream bed, let's assign a control volume that extends halfway to the cross-section on either side. And look at this cross-section two here. Now let's put on the sketch the water discharge, Q, and the inflowing sediment load. Then we can take this equation here and say if we want to do a finite difference in between the upper boundary and the downstream boundary on our control volume, G, or the rate of change of G with respect to X then, becomes G of the, of, of the outflow here, minus G of the inflow here, divided by delta X, which is the, the uh, total distance here. Then if B just represents the width of the channel at cross section two, we can write it directly. And then look at the change with respect to time of the bed. Now, for doing this, we need to introduce the idea that at some time, we know what the bed is. And let's call that time zero. So the finite differencing on the change with time is that uh, the bed 
or the rather the, the thickness of the depth of sediment in our control volume here at some time zero plus a short time later minus what that thickness was at time zero divided by delta t is a suitable finite approximation for that derivative or differential. And we can set that to zero. But what we want out of this equation is y sub s at some future time. If we know what y sub s is at the present time, and we're interested to project so over 50 years, what will the bed profile become at the end of 50 years? Then we want to know what y sub s is where delta t is 50 years. Well, I say at the onset, we have to take very, very small delta t values. So in order to get to that 50-year projection, we take a lot of delta t's and go gradually uh, from time zero to, say, time 50 years. Nevertheless, the equation we want to use is this equation right here solved for this particular term. So let's take this term over on that side of the equation. In order to do that, we need to first divide here. So let's uh, get rid of uh, this term. Say we've got GB minus GU over delta X, and we want to divide both sides by B sub zero, so that's one over B sub zero. That drops that term out. Then we need to get rid of this term, so we multiply by delta T over one, that drops that term out. And then we have a minus y sub s at time zero, which is this term and has the minus sign. And here we have is equal to a minus y sub s at t zero plus delta t. So now we've got the term identified that we want to calculate. We want it to be a plus so we can make this change in signs, and, and then it becomes the positive sign on that side. Now, what do we know about that equation? Well, we know B sub zero. We can measure that by going to the field, or rather to cross sections, and measuring the width. So B sub zero is known. Known values, B sub zero. We know delta x because we can assign these cross sections at whatever locations we want to, and once that's done, we can calculate delta x directly. Um, we know y sub s because we have one, we have some field data that measures the cross sections at some time zero. You say you know why this, but you have given something that measures the depth of a movable bed or how Oh, this, this control depth here, this might be, say, a rock out a top of rock. You mean you take that bed depth down to the top of the rock out rock or something like that? Yeah. So it could be several hundred feet then? It doesn't have to be several hundred feet. Well, I mean, it could be. Could be. It could be just. Could be a foot, could be zero. But that's the concept. We, we know, well, I should say, we can determine what the depth is to some immobile layer. Now, as a matter of, let me get off to the side for just a minute, Gary. In the program, we seldom ever go more than 10 feet below the bed, unless we expect sky to happen, because the bed tends to fluctuate um, up and down in alluvial river. And Unless there's some reason we expect it to fluctuate more than 10 feet, we just arbitrarily cut this, this uh, control volume on the sediment at 10 feet. Theoretically, though, it should go to the top of rock. Okay, so that is known. The uh, time, the time interval we can prescribe, delta t, it's an input item. So that's one of the things that we can input So it's really not an unknown. That still leaves us with uh, an unknown there, an unknown there, and an unknown there, and only one equation. The concept of, of, of boundary conditions is used to satisfy one of these unknowns. 
You know, the first, the, the workshop we had on sediment data analysis, we took great pains to develop an inflowing load curve, we called it. Okay, if the most upstream cross section, that inflowing load curve becomes the inflowing load to the reach. And so we have prescribed a boundary condition that satisfies one unknown at the upstream cross section. Yesterday, we went to great lengths to let you calculate the sediment transport potential with Toffoletti's method. The idea being that we can satisfy one more unknown by introducing another equation, and that's the fourth equation on the, on, on the sheet that you've got there. It doesn't say what transport function, it just says transport function. So you can substitute in there Toffoletti's method if you want to, or Einstein, or Du Bois, or Graphs, or anybody that you'd like to use, even you can even put one of your own if you've got enough theory data to calibrate the thing. With that additional equation, then we would have an equation for GD. It has to be a function of something that we can, that we, that does not include this equation of uh, continuity, so we make it a function of the hydraulic parameters that are listed out here as Q and Y <coughs> of the grain size distribution that's listed out there, of the water temperature. Essentially, it's the ingredients that you use to calculate from Toffoletti's method yesterday. Those become the the um, functional relationship that we want that we have to supply data for. With this additional equation then, we're satisfied here. We've already satisfied ourselves here by the boundary condition. And so that just leaves one unknown in this equation, and that's the y sub s term that we're trying to calculate. So when we talk about calculating stream bed profiles then that's the form of the equation, that is the equation that we're using. However, you, can, you have the option of selecting transport functions other than Toffoletti to satisfy this, uh, this term right here. <coughs> 